was found abandoned in a wildlife refuge with the key in the ignition and clothing scattered around, eerily similar to how Keith's car was found. At the time of Keith and Cassandra's disappearance, both of these double homicides had remained unsolved. Cassandra's older sister Terry was a Newport News police officer. As soon as she learned what had happened, she knew that her sister wouldn't have gone swimming and wouldn't have disappeared voluntarily. She quickly drove to where Keith's car was found and told park rangers that she was certain they were dealing with a crime. When police searched through the abandoned Toyota, they found most of Keith's clothing, some Cassandra's clothing and three shoes. Oddly, one of Cassandra's shoes was missing and it was never found. Keith's wallet and Cassandra's purse were also found in the car. There was no blood found inside the car and there was nothing to indicate a struggle had taken place. Although investigators found no signs of foul the most likely explanation for the disappearance. Overnight, temperatures had been in the low to mid 40s, far too cold for anyone to consider going swimming, and detectives didn't believe that the couple would have voluntarily left the car without their clothing. A large scale search was launched the day Keith's car was found. After tracking dog seemed to pick up the couple's scent, heading down a steep 25 foot embankment to a small beach below, investigators scoured the shoreline for more than three miles in each direction. Divers spent hours searching underwater. They found nothing to indicate that Keith or Cassandra had been on the beach. State helicopters were used to fly over the area surrounding the parkway but they found nothing significant. Searchers were sent to several small islands located in the water to comb along the shorelines while boats and divers continued to scour the river. Despite the extensive search no clues to the couple's whereabouts or fate were found. The families of the missing couple didn't believe that they would have stopped along Colonial Parkway for any reason. Cassandra had a 2am curfew and she made sure she was always on time. She would call if she was going to be a few minutes late. They were sure she intended to come straight home after leaving the party at 1.30am. Keith's family noted they usually avoided driving on Colonial Parkway. The road had become somewhat stigmatised after the 
Christ. Oh.